Here is an introduction to the solar system to accompany chapter 7 of the textbook Astronomy from OpenStax. So here's the solar system in one slide for the most part, and there's a lot to, to take in here. So let's just try to try to jump through it. What you're, what you're basically looking at are kind of the major objects of the solar system. Any object that has a color is accurately portrayed by size. Um, but not by distance here, okay? <clears throat> so we have eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. These are the terrestrial planets. We have eight of these gaseous and icy planets, the Jovian planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Um, other major objects that we have are the asteroid belt here. So that's a, a lot of rocks and some uh, dwarf planets, or really one dwarf planet and some big rocks and small ones too. And then out here is the Kuiper Belt. And so that's like a lot of icy stuff, some more dwarf planets like uh, Pluto you may have heard of. You know, we used to consider a planet. It's really more, more a dwarf planet. Um, and outside of all this is something called the Oort Cloud that we'll talk about a little bit. Um, and the planets, you know, have, have moons. The inner ones, not so much. The outer ones have, have lots of them. And we'll go into all this in a, in a bit more um, detail. So the... Again, the objects that are, have a color, they're accurately portrayed by size. Um, by distance, it's, it's hard to do size and distance at the same time and see anything. Um, here is accurately to scale by distance, this sort of number line looking thing here at, at the bottom. So basically, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars look like they're almost on top of each other. And then you get out to Jupiter and you see the distances are quite vast. Uh, getting out to these outer planets and getting out to the Kuiper Belt is extremely, um, extremely far away from, from the sun. So in terms of the orbits of the planets, so for the most part, they orbit in the same plane. Um, that plane is called the ecliptic, and pretty much everything orbits um, along that ecliptic. So what you're looking at in these two GIFs, the left one, this is the inner solar system. So you're seeing uh, Mercury zipping around the sun. Venus uh, is the other one, kind of the inner one that's moving a bit slower. And then Earth and Mars have lines going to them. So these are, um, you know, relative. Uh, you can scale their orbit time by basically saying, OK, one orbit for Earth is a year. And then you can figure out from that <clears throat> the orbits of these other guys. And this is going to follow Kepler's law. You know, the, the um, period squared is proportional to the sun and major axis cubed. Now, looking at the outer planets, relatively speaking, you know, the inner ones are zipping around, right? You see Earth <laughs> flying around. It takes a long time for Jupiter to make one orbit. Um, and then you see Saturn as well. And out there um, looks like uh, Uranus, and we can't even see Neptune. So <clears throat> for the most part, they're all on this ecliptic. You can see the relative orbital periods. And um, the orbits are pretty close to circular. Like these look quite circular. They're they're mostly circular. So the planets we can divide into two classes. So here they're shown accurately by size, but not by distance. The inner ones, these are terrestrial. So the, the rocky ones, these are Jovian, which are gas and ice. And we learned a little bit about this in the um, introduction to star formation and introduction to planet formation. There's this thing called the frost line, and that's why your rocky planets are, are closer and your, your gaseous icy ones are, are further away from the, the host star, which in this case is the sun. So we're going to have a whole separate uh, lecture on the introduction to terrestrial planets and a, and a separate one on Jovian planets. But here's, here's terrestrial planets in one slide. So these are also called the inner planets for uh, obvious reasons. They're closer to the sun. So they're all inside the frost line. They're less than five um, astronomical units. So that's five Earth to Sun distances from the Sun. Um, and because of that, they're made of rocks and minerals, and that, that gives them a density of, you know, on the order of five grams per centimeter cubed, your typical rock and mineral type, type density. <clears throat> Their atmospheres are, are quite thin, you know, relative to the Jovian planets. They're, they're thick enough to have weather, at least on... Um, Mars, Earth, and Venus, um, but they're, they're still quite thin, relatively speaking. You know, interestingly, they're secondary atmospheres. So what I mean by that is 
the atmosphere on um, on these planets was not accreted onto the the planet. It wasn't formed, you know, along with the body itself. So it wasn't like <clears throat> in the introduction to planet formation we talked about, you know, molecules sticking to make dust, dust sticking to make rocks, rocks sticking to make planetesimals, planetesimals sticking together to make planets, and then the Jovian ones then collect gas. The gas here wasn't collected that way. So the gas on the outer part of the terrestrial planets, this was uh, by comet impacts bringing gas in and by um, volcanic activity freeing gas from the rocks inside of the, the planet. Um, so for instance, helium in our atmosphere is actually from radioactive decay of uh, nuclei like uranium that are in the Earth's crust. And so then that makes part of an atmosphere. Uh, Mercury is an exception. Its atmosphere is actually formed by this, it's so close to the sun, energetic particles from the sun are blasting its surface and creating a little thin atmosphere by, by ablating the, the surface, which is kind of amazing. Um, so Earth is the largest terrestrial planet in the solar system, and this is broken down by mass. You can see Earth is as massive as the other terrestrial planets uh, combined. So the scales here might be, might be deceiving a little bit. Earth is, is kind of the heavyweight out of these other ones. Venus is pretty large, but not <clears throat> quite as big as Earth. Um, and, you know, Mercury is, is a little tiny mite, relatively speaking. Um, the terrestrial planets don't have very many moons. Mercury and Venus don't have any. Earth has a, a pretty massive uh, moon, right? The moon's pretty big. Uh, we'll talk about it next time, but it's, it's probably a captured planet. And Mars has two asteroid-sized moons. The Jovian planets, relatively speaking, right there outside of the solar frost line, their density is about five times lower or so. So this is um, typical of liquids and ices. Um, <clears throat> the atmospheres here are very thick. So it's, it's most of the radius of the planet. So here you can see our Jovian planets, the, that um, brown sphere at the center, that's the, the core, that's the rocky stuff. And all the rest is, uh, is gas. For Jupiter and Saturn, and um, you know, gas and kind of ice for Uranus and uh, <clears throat> Neptune. And these were primary; these were formed in the collapse uh, or by, by accretion, right? So building up uh, by collecting gas uh, nearby. So Jupiter is by far the largest Jovian planet in the solar system. It is more massive than all the other planets combined, and you know, you can see that really looking at these to, to scale here. Um, you know, it's it's huge, has a whole lot of mass, um, and a lot of moons as well. So Jupiter and Saturn have, you know, on the order of 80 moons. Um, Jupiter has four that are kind of planet-sized. They would be big enough to basically be planets or close to it if they were on their own. Saturn has one pretty massive one and then a lot of other smaller moons. Um, and then Uranus and Neptune are no slouches, right, 27 and 14 moons. It's quite a bit. <clears throat> the Jovian planets also all have rings. Now Saturn is known for its particularly spectacular rings that you can you can see from a uh, you know like a 10 inch telescope on Earth so you don't have to have that big of a telescope one that's you know a few thousand dollars it's not cheap but it's it's not that crazy expensive you can see those rings but the other Jovian planets have have rings as well they're just less substantial now moons uh, feature prominently in the solar system there's a little over 200. Uh, and as we just mentioned, most of them are for the for the Jovian planets, um, and they're shown here to scale. So um, you can see the Galilean moons. These are the four major moons of Jupiter. These are huge, right? They're all bigger than our our moon. Um, <clears throat> Titan on Saturn is another uh, significant one, just because it's so large. Again, much bigger than our moon. Uh, you know, on the order of the size of the Galilean moons. <clears throat> Neptune has a pretty big moon called Triton. It's uh, bigger than uh, bigger than Pluto, right? So bigger than this dwarf planet, so it's, it's pretty significant. And there are many other ones. You see lots of these are kind of just big old, uh, sorry, those are asteroids, but a lot of these are just kind of big old rocks that um, aren't even really spherical. Many are spherical, and you have some that kind of look like the, the Death Star, especially this moon of Saturn called Iapetus, where you see these big, um, impact craters that give that kind of 
cool look to them. So a lot of different moons in the um, <clears throat> in the solar system, and and most of them are rocky, though not necessarily all of them. Other major feature in the solar system are the belts. So um, in between the terrestrial planets and the Jovian planets is the asteroid belt. And so these are basically rocks that didn't themselves form a planet. And we'll talk about how they formed in next week's set of lectures when we talk about the origin of the solar system. <clears throat> but in any case, you have lots of these rocks and some of them are pretty big. So tucked in to the asteroid belt here is a dwarf planet called Ceres that is, is rather large. And it, had it cleared its own orbital path, it would be considered a planet, but it, it did not. It's, it's stuck in this stuff. Um, you also have this cool uh, set of rocks that um, are at these different locations, these three different locations from uh, Jupiter. These are called the, uh, the Trojan points is how I've learned them, but they do have different, different names. We'll talk more about those in the terrestrial planets lecture and in the origin of the solar system lecture for next week. Much further out is something called the Kuiper Belt. So while the asteroid belt is comprised of dust and rocks, the Kuiper Belt, this, these are ice um, chunks and ice balls, and some of them are very large, right? So you have you know, dwarf planet-sized objects, like big balls of ice, that didn't themselves form a planet. So they're all, <clears throat> they didn't clear their own orbital path. They're all kind of in this, in this neighborhood, um, very, very far from the sun. So you're talking about 40 Earth to sun distances is how far out this uh, thing is called the Kuiper Belt. Now moving even further out is the Oort cloud. So this is <clears throat> extremely far from the, um, from the sun. So the horizontal distance here is a logarithmic scale. Um, so, you know, the, the heliosphere, this is basically where the um, interstellar medium is impacted by the sun. There's a significant enough radiation pressure. That's like 100 Earth to sun distances out. And we have a space probe that is just now finding the edge of this that was launched back in the 70s. Uh, takes a long time to, to go very far. Um, so probably before most people who were listening to this were born, this thing was launched and it's now finally near the edge of the, this part of the solar system, much, much further out. So, <clears throat> you know, 10 to 100 times further out than that is this thing we believe called the Oort cloud. Now, it is a hypothetical um, object. We we can't directly observe it so far because it's made of a lot of little small things that are hard to see. They don't produce their own light and they only reflect light from the sun and this far away, it's very dim. So um, there, it's inferred by other, um, other pieces of data, one of them being comets, you know, where do, where do some comets come from? But anyhow, um, this is a, is a huge, basically collection of ice chunks and there's a disk and then a spherical shell that is thought to be in the outer reaches of our solar system. Um, so right, quite far away and it's kind of neat. Now just to round it out, we'll talk about a few more things in the solar system. So uh, comets and, and meteoroids. So a comet, this is an icy object that has originated from somewhere in the outer reaches of the solar system. So the Kuiper belt or the Oort cloud and the orbit is highly eccentric. <clears throat> so it's not you know, close to circular at all. So here's the sun, that's gonna be one focus of an ellipse. And these, um, these comets follow these elliptical paths. And some of them that are in the, in the Kuiper belt have you know, um, <clears throat> centuries periods, and then you have ones in the Oort cloud that have even much longer than that, um, you know, uh, tens of thousands of years. And when you look at a comet in the sky, you usually don't see it when it's far away. You see it once it gets close enough to the sun, um, the, the dust tail. So this is just dust kind of flying off the back of the comet that finally reflects enough light that you can see it. And then there's a second tail called the gas tail that's always pointing directly away from the sun. And this is the photon pressure from the sun is, um, is, is blasting material off of that, um, <clears throat> that, um, comet and it's blowing the dust away. So you have these two, two tails. And in fact, when comets get close enough to the sun, they can get heated up and gas jets uh, blow out of the surface. So this isn't even the big gas tail. These are just little jets 
when you look at this particular uh, comet, which is pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> so meteoroids, these are, these are different objects. So the comet is an icy object. The meteoroid is a rocky or metallic object. So um, <clears throat> you can guess this is originated from a different place in the solar system. So for instance, it can be uh, an, an asteroid or a chunk of an asteroid from the asteroid belt. It can be a chunk of a comet um, in, in principle, though most of them are gonna be rocky or metallic. Um, and it, they can also be produced from a planet impact. So you can have um, some asteroid uh, or very large meteoroid hit the surface of the moon, for instance, and hit it so hard that it blasts rocks into space. Um, <clears throat> so the meteoroid, this is really something kind of floating out in space. And then once it enters our atmosphere, we'd call it a meteor. And when you find it on the Earth, that's a meteorite. So it's just the three sort of life phases of this um, rocky object. And these are much smaller than asteroids, so um, <clears throat> than your average asteroid anyway. So meteoroid, you know, something like centimeter to meter size. And that is it for this introduction to the solar system for Astronomy 1000.